today I want to talk to you about an urban farm here in the middle of Phoenix, Arizona. We're in a metropolitan city and we have this beautiful greenhouse here. I get lots of questions all the time. You know, what does it take to build an urban farm, an urban greenhouse? So today I want to talk to you and walk through the different components here at True Garden. So we have this little space here between, you know, the outside and the inside, our wet wall. And a lot of times people think this is just you know, a hard screen, but it's actually something called thrip screen. It's actually designed to keep all those little bugs out and other things that we don't want coming inside our greenhouse. So it's very, very tiny. So you can see where it's keeping bugs and different debris out of the greenhouse, but yet it's allowing the air to flow right in. So when we have days that are 120 here in Arizona, we can cool this down with an incredible wet wall here. This wet wall is like a big swamp cooler. It's 44 feet long, six feet tall, six inches deep. We're pulling this hot 120 degree air through it and it cools it. We can cool it down by 25 degrees. It's incredible, this technology. So we run water through it, we pull air through it, and then it's just that British thermal exchange where you get that drop in temperature. Very, very simple concept. It's a great way to just cool the air in your greenhouse. And again, we built this structure to last forever. So when you look at this galvanized steel that we're using, it's all hot dipped. And you know, those of us that really don't understand what it takes to make a greenhouse, this stuff is never gonna rust. It's gonna be here forever. So I built this greenhouse to stand forever, to be here. So whoever is running it, they'll have an incredible greenhouse that'll just be able to continue you know, providing food year round. If we look at some other things, we also have a curtain. Let me roll this curtain down. When we do have days that are cold, this curtain will come down and close off the greenhouse. So you'll see this as it's coming down here. So in the summertime, it stays open all, t all the time. But in the wintertime, on those few days that we have some, you know, where if it may freeze here in Arizona, which doesn't happen very often, we might get a handful of days, this curtain can actually come down and seal off that greenhouse and help it keep nice and warm. So again, these little things can really add a lot to your urban farm. So this isn't just your typical greenhouse. This is a greenhouse that's developed to have all these different accessories so that way you can grow year round no matter what your environment is. So you can see this is coming down now. And right now we have the exhaust fans on, but this will come down and seal all the way. And it really does a great job of sealing off. And that way you can really maintain that temperature inside the greenhouse. So that's just one aspect of what you can have in your greenhouse. Let me show you another thing. Um, we have a microfogging system here that goes along with this you know, greenhouse. This actually is not your typical fogging system. When you look at your typical fogging system, say you go to a restaurant and things like that, and those misters are on, well, they drip on you and you get wet, right? Well, this is a microfogging system. That doesn't happen. It actually makes those particles microfogging. The water particles are very, very tiny and they help cool that temperature in your greenhouse again. Another 25 to 30 degrees. So between the wet wall and the microfogging system, we can drop the temperature up to 50 degrees in there. Our goal is to maintain a nice environment between 70 and 75 degrees in that greenhouse year round. With these kind of things, we can do that. It's easy to do. So between uh, the wet wall and the microfogging system, it's a great way to do it. Also, we have a very simple Wadsworth controller. This is sort of the brains of the, the whole greenhouse. It tells things to turn on and turn off based on our presets. The goal is not to make it so difficult you can't figure it out. So it's really simple. We have different, uh, it's different control systems here where we have you have things controlling the exhaust fans, you have the pad pump, you have the heaters. We do have two heaters in here, and I'll show you those two as well. You also have the uh, roof vents, and I'm going to show you other ways we keep this greenhouse cool as well, just with roof vents. So that'll be neat to see as well. So there's multiple things built into this greenhouse to keep it simple, and just use natural heating and cooling methods that nature's provided for us. And that's what this greenhouse was done in this urban environment. Come on next, this way, we're gonna go into the greenhouse here. When you look at this greenhouse, 
we purposely built it to have gutter height, which is your sidewall height, to be 16 feet tall. We did that on purpose, because when you have towers that are nine feet tall, hot air rises. So it's important that you build your gutter, hall, gutter height at least 16 feet to maintain that temperature where it's not sitting on your towers and then burns your towers. So come on into the greenhouse here. We're gonna talk more about different things we put in. There's the big wet wall. It's been running. So it's, it's a nice, probably 73, 74 degrees in here right now, even though it's gonna be, what, 110 today. So it's a beautiful day inside the greenhouse. You can see how we're growing lots of different seedlings, lots of beautiful leafy greens here. And it's because it's been designed to grow in the desert. So again, if you look at the peak of the greenhouse, this is an A-frame greenhouse. And at the peak, we're 23 feet tall. So again, it's an A-frame, that hot air rises, and then we exhaust it out the back with four big oversized exhaust fans. So our goal was to keep it simple and then allow this greenhouse to function automatically as the temperature outside does different things. We also have a heat shield curtain up there because we know in certain parts of the world, it's desert. It's even hotter than Arizona. I can't imagine it being hotter than Arizona. But yes, there's places in the world that it's even hotter. What, 73% of the world is desert. Can you imagine that? We're still living there. So we have to design a greenhouse that can actually function in that climate. So this greenhouse will be the greenhouse they will use in those climates as well. This greenhouse actually still can be used in cold climates too. And that's when we will put in a double wall polycarbonate. This is a single wall polycarbonate. So the glass that you see on the wall is actually single polycarb made by GE. It's a Lexan glass that is 85% light diffusing. It's actually a video, videographer's you know, dream to have such diffused lighting. We're not using any answer lighting to make this video. It just shows you the kind of lighting that's coming in here is incredible. And this Lexan glass that we have is actually making it, making it just an incredible environment here for us to grow all these leafy green greens year round. So when you use this uh, technology, this Lexan glass has a tinsel strength of 10,000 pounds per square inch. Well, we want it to be strong because we have a lot of high winds here at times in, during our monsoon seasons in July, which is what's coming up. So we built this greenhouse to withstand 140 mile per hour winds. So, so it's really important that you build your greenhouse to withstand the environmental conditions that you're involved in. So again, as you couple the microfogging system, the wet wall, you've got the, the, the heat shield. All these things can help you maintain the environment that you're trying to grow your produce in. It's a great way to do it. On days that it uh, gets a little cool, which maybe is four or five times a year, not very many, those heaters will kick on based on the, the program that we give it as well. So the goal is to keep it simple, have a greenhouse that does the things for you, automates it, but you don't spend hundreds of thousands of dollars doing it. Some of these greenhouses that are being erected in, er, in uh, more of the agricultural sectors, you almost have to be an IT whiz, a, a chemist that you know just maintains the water. You have to have all these different engineers. This urban farm is designed for those of us that are just normal people that can run this without any major issues. It's very simple. You build it, keep it simple, and that's what this whole system is about. So again, when you look at our towers, it was designed to be kept simple. It was designed for a third grader to do. And our goal is to keep it simple, that way it stays fun. We have lots of different little things like this, but we have these HFA fans, these little fans that help circulate the air movement. Because in the very back, we have these big exhaust fans that are allowing us to pull air through the big wet wall, which then causes that drop in temperature. So again, designing your greenhouse the appropriate way will really help it. This greenhouse, was put on this piece of property, so it's direct north. So we're north-south laid out. So it's important to know which way the sun comes up in your neighborhood. I ask this question all the time. The sun comes up in what direction? It doesn't matter. No matter where you live, it always comes up in the east. So the sun rises there in the east, comes up over your greenhouse, and down in the west. Why is that important? Well, when you're putting your towers in, you can do these double back rows like we have here, and we never get shadowing at the bottom. 
as you can see, these plants here at the bottom are just as big as the ones at the top. That's because this greenhouse was designed due north and south. So if you set your greenhouse up properly, you'll always be successful in growing year round, having plants at the bottom that don't get any shadowing. So we're able to go 13 pots tall in here, which is 52 grow ports, and we can grow year round with no issues. So it's important to set your greenhouse up where it faces north south. Also on the north end, that's where we get the least amount of sun. So that's why we put all our equipment on the north end here. So it's in another good reason. So the north side, you get the least amount of sun and you can set that up. We also put our seedlings in, in the front here because then we're getting the freshest, cleanest air across them as well. So if you end up having any type of bug problems, they're not on your seedlings. So again, it's a really great, another, another way to set up your greenhouse to be, make sure you're being successful and growing year round. So I wanted to show you our oversized exhaust fans back here that help pull that air through the wet wall up front, which helps cool the greenhouse. So we have these big oversized exhaust fans that are pulling cold air through our towers, keeping them cool, even in the middle of the summer when it's 120 degrees out. The average temperature in here is in the mid 70s, which is incredible. So let me show you one of these. Come on back here. You've got this big oversized fan going, and you can see the size of that blade. And again, this is technology that's been around for decades, used in greenhouses all over the world. So this isn't new technology. It's just a matter of using the technology properly so you can grow your food year round. I'm gonna turn this back on. I mean, look at, you can see this incredible basil that we're growing here. It's just going wild. This basil wants to be put on your plate, on pizzas, you know, making different types of salads, you know, tomatoes, you know, slicing some tomatoes with some, some of the cheese, oh, a little bit of olive oil. Incredible what we can do, even growing basil. Just beautiful basil, you can smell it. Too bad you can't smell this, making me hungry. But you can do this in your own house, anywhere in the world. You don't have to be here in Arizona. This greenhouse was designed for you to do this anywhere in the world. So those of you that love basil, I mean, oh my goodness, you should just smell this. Too bad you can't smell this. I mean, look at the size of that leaf. The aroma is incredible. So if you're really into making pesto sauce, this basil is something else. It's, it's to live and die for.